Hello and welcome to another edition of Focus on Morris County. I'm Joe Garifo, Public Information Officer for the Morris County Government. Focus on Morris County is a program that's designed to keep us up to date on the actions that are being taken by the Morris County Board of Freeholders. And the show is also intended to make us all more aware of the many facets of Morris County government. Now on this segment of the program, we are going to update a program that uh, we spoke about, uh, I guess around the middle of 2012. It is a program that is designed to assist homeowners who have repeatedly been the victims of flooding. And uh, here to update that program for us is my guest. She is Jennifer McCulloch. Uh, Jennifer is uh, with the Morris County Department of Planning and Development, and she is the coordinator of this innovative flood mitigation program. Jennifer, welcome to the oh, program. Oh, thank you, Joe. Um, let's look back a bit first before we get to what's going on today. Mm -hmm. Back in March of 2012, I believe it was, the uh, Morris County Freeholders approved this flood mitigation program uh, to help purchase flood-prone properties from willing sellers and convert the land to open space. Now, give us a little background, if you will, what led up to the development of this program? Sure. Um, well, in August of 2011, when Hurricane Irene hit, um, it really highlighted uh, the cycle of destructive, repetitive flooding that homeowners in Morris County struggle with. Um, so freeholders Gene File and Ann Grassi felt very strongly that a more proactive approach could be developed to permanently um, move people out of harm's way and reduce the further destruction from flooding. So about one month after Irene, the freeholders um, mandated an exploratory committee be formed. Uh, their job was to assess the feasibility of creating a dedicated flood acquisition program at the county level, which is something that had never been done before. Um, when the feasibility committee started looking into this issue, they were pretty surprised to find that New Jersey ranks number two nationwide for severe repetitive flood loss. We are second only to Louisiana. Um, roughly half the towns in Morris County are affected by serious flooding. And further research showed that flood mitigation, on average, has a five to one return on investment. Uh, so it's a highly um, effective and efficient method. And the preserved land actually acts as a giant sponge protecting the surrounding lands. Um, so as you said in, in March, um, with the support and leadership and frankly the vision of freeholders File and Grassi, uh, the freeholder board created a flood mitigation program um, and they dedicated $16 million in grant funds uh, to buy out homes that are heavily affected by flooding. Now, how is the program structured? Um, the program is structured for municipalities uh, to apply to us okay. because municipalities are in effect going to be the ultimate owners and stewards of this property. Um, so once a municipality applies to the program and the staff sees that, you know, yes, uh, this is a viable application, it's presented to our flood mitigation committee um, and then to the freeholders. And it's actually a two-step approval process, um, preliminary approval is given and a lump sum amount um, is set aside uh, for groups of homes, which we call project areas. And then once the town has had an opportunity to do their due diligence and appraisals, and they actually have an executed sales contract with the homeowner, mm -hmm. uh, then we go for what's called final approval, and that's on an individual house-by-house -house basis. Now, you mentioned that uh, initially there was $16 million set aside for the flood mitigation program. Mm -hmm. I believe the money comes from the uh, Preservation Trust, the Open Space Correct. Trust Fund. So the flood mitigation program is a component of that right. fund. H how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> well, the Preservation Trust was formed about 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and their initial focus was on open space and farmland. But it's a dynamic program, and it's set up to address the needs of Morris County residents. So, for example, about 10 years ago, Historic Preservation was added as one of the grant programs. So when the freeholders saw this emergent need in Morris County, they said, you know, it's time to create a new grant program. So flood mitigation um, is kind of a subset, if you will, of open space, uh, but they have their own funding source, they have their own committee, and they report directly to the freeholders. So now how much funding 
uh, is a project eligible for under this flood mitigation program? How does that work? Okay. Um, there's basically two funding tracks within the program. Um, the first one is called the MATCH program, and it's exactly what it sounds like. We provide the MATCH to another funding agency. It's usually FEMA or DEP's Blue Acres program. Um, in that situation, we will fund up to 25% of the cost share. Um, the other program, which is the really innovative one, is the core program. And that basically catches the homeowners who have fallen through the FEMA or the Blue Acres funding net. Um, in the core program, we will fund up to 75% of the cost share. A large portion <laughs> of, the, uh, of the cost and, and the, uh, the homeowners uh, who are participating in this program uh, are they surprised? Uh, I think by the so. Yeah. But I think the freeholders actually put um, a very interesting requirement that I think was just brilliant um, for a municipality to um, put in an application to the core program. They need to work with Morris County um, developing what's called a flood acquisition plan, mm -hmm. or what, since that's such a tongue twister, we call it a flap. Okay. And basically what this does is it looks at a number of scientific factors as well as the flood history and the rivers on site and, and a lot of data uh, from flood insurance studies um, done by the U.S. Geological Service. And we get a macro view of what's going on in terms of flooding with the town. So the freeholders basically said, yes, we will fund you up to 75%, but we need to have a very complete view of what your needs are now and going into the future. Okay, so where do we stand now with the program? How many properties have mm -hmm. been approved uh, for funding? Uh, have any closings mm -hmm. taken place yet? Where do we stand today? Well, we've been very busy. <laughs> 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 um, we have 79 projects in six different towns. Uh, those towns are Denville, Parsippany, Pequannock, Lincoln Park, Riverdale, and Booton. Um, out of those 79 projects, roughly, well, actually a little over 8 million has been encumbered. So half of the 16 million that the freeholders originally allocated to this program has been spent in 10 months. Mm -hmm. And um, we've had six closings in Denville, which we're very excited about. And we have some closings coming up in Parsippany. Um, additionally, we still have um, new towns coming in in the wake of Hurricane Irene. Um, one thing I think that's really important um, to keep in mind when you look at a new program like this is the towns, for the most part, had never done flood buyouts before. They didn't have the infrastructure or the staff expertise. So my hats are off to these towns who really, you know, zoomed up that learning curve. Yeah. Now, what does the funding not pay for? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, since it's derived from the open space tax, we do not pay for demolition. Okay. We don't pay for legal fees, and we don't pay administrative costs. Okay. And you're dealing, again, well, and, and the county is not dealing with, but the municipalities are dealing with willing sellers. I think Correct. we need to stress that. Right? Yes, and coming. only residential homes. We don't work with businesses or government buildings. You mentioned the properties that have already applied. I think you said there were 79. Right. Any idea as to perhaps how many properties might be eligible to participate in the program? Because I'm sure there are more than 79. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's a, a tough number to get your hand around. Okay. Um, because when we analyze these applications, it's a pretty stringent okay. uh, standard that we apply. But based on National Flood Insurance Program statistics, there are approximately 4,500 homes in Morris County um, that are affected by flooding. And of that, over 1,000 have a severe repetitive loss component to them. So we think that there's a large need out there. Yeah. Um, and it's up to the homeowners to contact their municipality if they have an issue. And then the municipalities are great about reaching out to us. And every municipality is eligible to participate in this program. Correct? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I have to say that's been um, one of the nice benefits of this is historically um, open space trust fund money has gone to a lot of suburban towns. Mm -hmm. um, this is an opportunity for the more urban towns uh, to kind of get their piece of the pie because that's where a lot of this flooding seems to occur is where there's heavy development. Yeah. Now, th there is something called the, and I want to make sure I have this correct, the Flood Insurance Reform Act of 2012. Is this act um, 
uh, affecting homeowners here in Morris County? And if so, it will affect how? homeowners nationwide. Okay. Um, what does it, it do? What, what does the act say? Well, it's it's actually called the Biggert Waters Act okay. of 2012. Um, which is kind of amusing because it sounds like bigger waters. waters yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but basically, the National Flood Insurance Program was due to expire. So it extended the life of that program by five years um, until September of 2017. Um, but more importantly, um, this act actually eliminates flood insurance premium subsidies and discounts, which is something that has really been an aid to homeowners in the past. And what they're trying to do is move the flood insurance rates to actually reflect the risk, the actual risk. Um, so unfortunately, homeowners should expect significantly higher flood insurance rates. Now that rate jump has been capped at 25% a year, but the rate will continue to rise until it reaches the actual actuarial risk. Um, and there's a very intense focus on new flood maps because these flood maps determine the insurance rates. Mm -hmm. uh, so FEMA is expecting in the next one to two years to complete these flood maps. And just in terms of New Jersey, to give you an idea, uh, they expect that the flood level risks that we'll see in New Jersey will increase by one to four feet for the average home. So this is sobering news. Yeah, so would, would you advise homeowners to perhaps check with their insurance um, I, companies to, to see, you know, what their particular status exactly. Is going to be. I, I would. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, Jennifer McCulloch, if someone wanted additional information about the Morris County Flood Mitigation Program, I'm going to give them some uh, contact information. Uh, yours, in particular, <laughs> uh, you can you can uh, find out a lot of information on the. Uh, Morris County Department of Planning and Development website, first of all, and that is morrisplanning.org. Uh, you may also email directly Jennifer McCulloch, who is the coordinator of the Flood Mitigation Program, and her email address, as you see up on the screen, is jmcculloch at co.morris.nj.us, and uh, you may also give her a call if you'd like at 973-829-8100. Uh, Jennifer McCulloch, thank you very much for giving us an update on this uh, program oh, today. Thank you for having me, Joe. Now, if uh, you have a question about Morris County government that you would like to have answered, you can call the Morris County Freeholders Office at 973-285-6010. You may also visit the county government's website at morriscountynj.gov. And while you're there, why don't you sign up for Morris County's electronic newsletter, Morris Connections. It'll deliver county government news right to your inbox. And uh, you can also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and check out past programs and other informational videos on the county's YouTube channel. Uh, if you'd like to browse Morris County's document library, you can do that on Scribd. And you can check out some photos from various county events on Flickr. I'm Joe Garifo. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Are you pregnant, scared, or a new mother who can't care for your newborn? There's a safe haven in New Jersey. You or a friend can bring an infant to any hospital or police station and give up custody safely, legally, and anonymously. No questions asked. No shame. No blame. No names. Call 1-877-839-2339 or visit njsafehaven.org to learn more. Remember, New Jersey has a safe haven for unwanted infants. Brought to you by the New Jersey Department of Children and Families. Welcome back to Focus on Morris County. I'm Joe Garifo, and on this segment of the program, we are going to focus on the Morris County Historic Preservation Program, which is a component of the Morris County Preservation Trust. We're going to learn a little bit about each from my guest. He is uh, Ray Chang, and Ray is in the Morris County Department of Planning and Development, and he is the director of the Preservation Trust. Ray, welcome to Thank the program. You, Joe. Give us an overview, if you will, please, of the uh, Preservation Trust program and the various areas that it covers. Yes, the Preservation Trust program administers the open space, the farmland, and historic sites, and most recently, the flood mitigation uh, projects. Uh, it was uh, established by the freeholders in 1992. Um, and in fact, the some funds also go to uh, Morris County Park Commission mm -hmm. and the Municipal Utilities Authority. 
And uh, the freeholders established uh, the program after a uh, referendum, yes. I believe, uh, which passed overwhelmingly uh, by the voters here in uh, Morris County. So uh, how is this program funded, Ray? Yeah, the referendum um, set a sum between an eighth and a quarter cent of the existing tax uh, to be set aside for historic preservation. Now, historic preservation is a component of the uh, Preservation Trust. Um, how much money did the historic preservation component have to work with last year in uh, 2012? Uh, we had close to 2.5 million um, to be distributed to historic preservation projects. And applications last year, how many were received for various projects and how many wound up being approved? Yeah, we received 38 applications and out of that we funded 27 and, uh, now, that, that 38 applications, was that a larger number, number than usual that, uh, that you received over the past 10 years? Um, I guess it's about the same for the past few years, Okay, around that number. Okay. You know. Who's eligible to apply for funding under the Historic Preservation Program? Uh, all the municipalities within Morris County, the qualified uh, nonprofit groups, uh, as well as the County of Morris are, are eligible. Now. I understand this year the application process, uh, the applications, a little bit different than they've been in years past. Yes. I believe normally there were two applications, construction and non-construction. This year there are three different types of application. Let me see if I have them correct. Mm -hmm. uh, a construction grant, a construction documents grant, mm -hmm. and a preservation planning grant. Yes. What is covered in the preservation planning grant application? Yeah, the preservation planning grant will cover your acquisition applications as well as your preservation planning documents and we mean by whether it's preservation plan, a historic structure report, or some type of study that relates to a implementation of a historic preservation project. Okay, and then the uh, the other uh, application that is, uh, I guess it's got a, a, a new name, mm -hmm. is the uh, construction documents right. grant application. What is covered here? These are the architectural drawings and specifications that a preservation architect could produce uh, that relates to implementation of a historic preservation projects. And then we have the construction grant. What is covered in the construction grant? These are the bricks and mortar <laughs> projects, including the uh, preservation activities, uh, restoration, stabilization, rehabilitation, that are defined by the Secretary of Interior standards for the treatment of historic properties. Okay. Yeah. What are some of the areas that are not covered? In other words, what if, if someone is going to be applying for a historic preservation grant, what should they know should not be in the application. Right. The program does not pay for interpretive activities, for example, like signage. Okay. Uh, we also do not pay for administrative or operational costs or regular maintenance, ongoing uh, maintenance activities. Okay. Or anything that does not conform to the Secretary of Interior standards. Okay. Yeah. Now, take us through the process, if you will, of uh, the, the application. Once an application is made to the, uh, uh, to the county, what happens then? Yeah, it's reviewed by an 11-member review board, which is appointed by the freeholders. Uh, they go through site visits to every site. They listen to uh, presentations from the applicants. Uh, it's also reviewed by a historic preservation consultant hired by the county um, who advises the review board. Mm -hmm. So they make their, the review board makes their recommendation to the freeholders at the end of the process for the Grant awards. Okay. Now we we have uh, a couple of examples of the projects that were approved in 2012 that uh, we're going to show you. First of all, Ray, I believe we have the um, uh, Museum of uh, Early Trade and Crafts in yes. Madison. Yes. What can you tell us about this? Yes, this is a 1900 Richardsonian Romanesque building, uh, originally constructed as the Madison uh, Public Library. Uh, individually listed on the New Jersey Register of Historic Places. Um, and this is, uh, I, I brought this in because I think it shows how moisture issues in masonry buildings can be addressed uh, through uh, minimally invasive techniques. Um, this building suffers from moisture infiltration. Um, so they use impulse radar to use to scan through the exterior walls uh, to verify the construction techniques as well as determining the moisture travel paths through the building. So the scope of this grant 
includes investigations, mm -hmm. also the completion of construction documents uh, for site improvements, masonry repairs, and thermal moisture protection. Interesting, yeah. interesting. The, the, uh, another uh, example of a project that was approved in 2012 is uh, Waterloo. Now, what can you tell us about this project? Yes, this, this is the Waterloo Village located in Alamoochee State Park uh, in Sussex and Morris counties. Uh, it's one of the best preserved Morris Canal sites uh, in New Jersey. And it's a key site for interpreting uh, the relationship between industry commerce, transportation, and agriculture uh, in mid-19th century New Jersey. Um, there is an existing registered nomination for the Waterloo Village, mm -hmm. but it's only in Sussex County at the oh, moment. Okay. So this grant will update that registered nomination by expanding the current boundaries of the district to include the portions on the Morris County side of the Musconet County River. And this will include a uh, canal, the Morris County Canal, the, the Morris Canal, mm -hmm. the railroad terminal facility, uh, ice houses, and uh, dwellings. And those are all preserved? Those are all there now? They're all there yeah, now, yeah. right. But yeah. they have not been accounted for as part of the registered nomination. OK. Yeah. Um, another project that was approved in 2012, uh, many of you may be familiar with this one as well. It's in Parsippany, Craftsman uh, Farms. What can you tell us about this project? Yes, this is one of four National Historic Landmarks in Morris mm -hmm. County. We're very proud of the, the really uh, countless uh, resources, um, historic resources in the county. Um, 1908 Log House, which I believe the, the picture was showing, is the principal building on Craftsman Farms. And it, it was designed by Gustav Stickley, who was a leader in the American Arts and Crafts Movement. And the grant will help to install a complete fire protection and sprinkler system uh, for the Log House which is the only structure that Stickley ever designed and built for his own personal use. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And again, this uh, is in Parsippany, and it is a museum that is uh, open to the public. If you, if you get a chance, you should uh, stop in. Uh, and, and the fourth example that we're going to show you uh, today is the Old Union Cemetery. What can you tell us about this project? Yes, this Old Union Cemetery is located in Long Valley Township of Washington. And the picture shows the tombstones in the cemetery that surrounds this ruin, uh, which, is a, which is the Union uh, Church ruin, which is another project that we funded previously. So you can see the results of county taxpayers' dollars uh, in, in uh, a preservation project in fruition. Um, this 1774 Union Church ruin and the surrounding cemetery is a focal point of the German Valley Historic District that's listed on the historic registers. Uh, the cemetery contains New Jersey's second largest collection of gravestones uh, by master carver John Solomon Teasel. Um, his gravestones date from 1780s to 1800, and it helps to document how German language-based communities assimilate uh, into uh, uh, an increasing English language-based uh, society. Um, so the scope will include condition assessment mm -hmm. of the gravestones, uh, and also recommended treatment for the markers. And just by these uh, four examples, I think we can get a, uh, a better understanding of the rich history yes. that exists here in, in Morris County. Ray, when an organization or a town receives a historic preservation grant, are they expected to match it or contribute funds uh, of their own? Yes, there is a matching requirement. Um, for acquisition projects, the matching requirement is 50%. Mm -hmm. So the county would pay for half of the acquisition cost. Uh, for all other grants, uh, the matching is 20%. Um, for non-construction grants that are under 5,000, there is no matching requirement. Okay. Yeah. Now, we mentioned, I think, at the uh, very start of the segment that the historic preservation component of Preservation Trust has been around for about uh, 10 years. Mm -hmm. Any idea, Ray, how many uh, towns have received grants? How many uh, projects have been uh, in receipt of grant money? Yes, well, we're very proud to be part of the efforts to preserve uh, 74 historic sites that are located throughout 32 towns. So 32 out of 39 towns in the county uh, have uh, received the benefits. Well, wow. now here in 2013, the application process, as I understand it, is underway. 
what are the uh, deadlines that organizations need to meet if they are applying for historic preservation? Funds? Yes, our application deadline for the 2013 cycle is the March 29th, okay. which is the last Friday in March. Yeah. And there is a declaration of intent that we ask people to submit by uh, February 28th. Now, is, is your staff uh, available for um, guidance to an organization? Maybe somebody is making an application for the right. first time. Throughout the application process, if they have any questions uh, about the, the application itself, your staff available to assist? Yes. Uh, all staff at the Preservation Trust is available to answer questions regarding the process. So feel free to call or email us. Okay. And that leads us to uh, some information, some contact information for the Morris County Preservation Trust and in particular the historic preservation component. Uh, if you would like to find out more, uh, the program is within the Morris County Department of Planning and Development, which is uh, located at 30 Schuyler Place in Morristown. You can give the office a call at 973-829-829. 8120. You can also find out a lot of information on a couple of websites. First of all, the Planning Department's website, which is morrisplanning.org. And uh, the Morris Preservation Trust has a website of its own. That is morrispreservation.org. Ray Chang, I want to thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you, Joe. Now, if you have a question about Morris County government that you would like to have answered, well, you can call the Morris County Freeholders Office. That telephone number is 973-285-6010. You may also visit the county government's website at morriscountynj.gov. And when you're there, why don't you sign up for Morris County's electronic newsletter, Morris Connections. That'll give you updated county government news delivered straight to your inbox. And also while you're on our website, uh, check out the various uh, social media that Morris County embraces. You can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, check out previous programs on YouTube, uh, browse through some of our county documents on our Scribd page, and uh, you can also check out some photographs from various county events on Flickr. I'm Joe Garifo. I want to thank you very much for being with us today and invite you to tune in again next week at this time for another edition of Focus on Morris County.